All right, guys, here is your warm-up for today. You should be on page... Sorry. You should be on page 16 for your warm-up. Go ahead and take a second to do these four problems. Please pause the video um, at this time so that you have a chance to do the work. All right, now that you've had a chance to do the work, let's go through these. Um, the first two I'm going to foil, the last two I'm going to box, just so we have a combination of both. So foil first, so it becomes 6x squared, then plus 6x, a minus 14x, and a minus 14. Remember to combine like terms. So your final answer is 6x squared minus... 8x minus 14. Okay, next again, we're going to foil. Actually, we're not going to foil because what do you notice about this problem? I'm hoping you're saying difference of squares. Now, if you foil or box, you still would get the same answer. But remember, if the binomials are exactly the same with opposite signs, we multiply the first terms and we multiply the last terms. There's not a whole lot of work involved. Exactly the same with opposite signs. So 3x plus 3x is 9x squared. Negative 2 times 2 is a negative 4. Okay, this is difference of squares. This one you need to memorize. Terms are exactly the same with opposite signs. Okay. This one I am going to box because it's a 2 by 3. If you foiled, that's fine too. So we get x minus 3, and we have x to the third minus 2x squared and a positive 6. Remember, to get inside the box, we multiply. So x to the fourth minus 2x to the third, and then 6x. And then we have negative 3x to the third, a positive 6x squared, and a negative 18. As always, your diagonals... Um, should be your like terms. Now you will notice, so I have my like terms here, and you will notice that these are not like terms. That is okay, but if they are like terms, they are going to be in diagonals. Those are not, so I'm not going to circle them, and I'm just going to rewrite. So you should end up with x to the fourth minus 5x to the third. Now I'm going to use this one because that's my squared, plus 6x squared plus 6 x minus 18. The reason these end up not being like terms is because we skipped a term here. You'll notice we have x to the third x squared and then we're missing the x term. That's okay, that could happen. But again, if you have like terms, they will be at the diagonals of each other. And then lastly, number four, this one's a for three by three. So negative 3x squared, 7x, and a negative 1, and then 2x squared, 8x, and a positive 4. So when I multiply in, I get negative 6x to the fourth, negative 24x to the third, and a negative 12x squared. Then I get 14x to the third, um, 56x squared, and 28x. Then we get a negative 2x squared, a negative 8x, and a negative 4. Here are my like terms. Okay, so final answer. Six, negative 6x to the fourth. I have a 14 and a negative 24. So 14 minus 24 gives me a negative 10x to the third. I have a negative 2 plus 56, which is a positive 54, minus that 12, which gives me a positive 42x squared. And then I have negative 8 plus 28, which is a positive 20x with the negative 4 attached at the end. Okay, remember, if we can multiply and we can add and subtract, you are going to be solid for your test on Tuesday. 
All right, at this time you should have um, an orange sheet in front of you. If you don't, take a second to pause and get that sheet. These are your notes for today. So we're gonna look at area and perimeter. Now, don't freak out because we are still adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Please remember today's date, so the 25th, 125, and you are on page six, uh, 17. So make sure that at the end of the lesson that this gets attached to page 17 in your notebook. Um, I would just put a little piece of tape on it and make sure it gets attached, because remember, if it's not attached for the notebook check, it's a zero. Okay, so let's go back to like third grade and talk about area and perimeter, perimeter real quick. How do you find the perimeter of any figure? Okay, so a figure with sides, how do we find the perimeter? I hope you're saying that you need to add all the sides, which would be the correct answer. So if you want to find the perimeter of something, you're going to add all the sides up. Now we've talked about area of a square or a rectangle before. We dealt with that quite a bit last semester. So you should remember that the area of a rectangle or a square is length times width. If you know those two things, so if you know you need to add all the sides for perimeter and the area is length times width, this part should not be difficult. Okay. So we're going to write an expression. Remember, an expression is something without an equal sign that represents the south side of the field. Okay, so you have your compass here, north, east, south, and west. So the south side of the field is just this. Now, I don't want the perimeter, but I want to know information about the south side. Okay, I want every piece of that south side. So I'm going to add up all those pieces. So I'm going to add... 5x plus 2 plus x squared minus 9 plus x squared minus 7x plus 12. I want to write an expression that represents just the south side of the field, so each of those pieces. All you are doing are adding those expressions together. Okay. Now number 2 says to simplify that polynomial. So simplify the polynomial expression that represents the south side of the field. So add it up, combine like terms, highest exponent to lowest, standard form. Take a second and do that. Because it's addition, you don't have to distribute anything. My highest exponent are the squareds. So x squared plus x squared is a 2x squared. My next highest is the x's. So 5x minus 7x is a negative 2x. And lastly, you have a 2 minus 9, which gives you negative 7. Negative 7 plus 12 is a positive so that is an expression simplified that represents the south side of the field. Okay. Number three, write a polynomial expression that represents the perimeter of the pumpkin field. So if we look here for the pumpkin field, now it's a square. Uh, it's actually a rectangle because these are not the same. So we have a rectangle, but you should know that Opposite sides of rectangles are congruent. So if this side is 5x plus 2, this side's 5x plus 2. If this is, or minus 2, excuse me. If this side's 5x plus 2, then this side's 5x plus 2. If I want to know the perimeter, and I'm just writing an expression that represents the perimeter, and I want to know the perimeter of the pumpkin patch, I'm going to add up all the sides. So let's start here and go 5x minus 2 plus 5x plus 2 plus 5x minus 2 plus 5x plus 2. Okay, you're adding up all the sides to get the perimeter. 
That's all you have to do for number three. It just says write in a, a polynomial expression that represents the perimeter. Now for number four, you're going to simplify that polynomial expression. So take a second and simplify. Again, it has to be in standard form. Okay, this one should be straightforward. I have 5x plus 5x is 10x plus 5x is 15x plus 5x is 20x. Negative 2 plus 2, go away. Negative 2 plus 2, go away. So my simplified expression is just 20x. Okay, I would like you to take a second and see if you complete can complete problems five and six. Remember, area is length times width, so locate the area of the potato field. You'll write an expression, and then you'll simplify the expression in number six. At this time, please pause the video so that you have a moment to work. Once everyone's done, please continue to play the video. All right, now that everybody has had a moment, if I go up to my potato field, which is here, and I want the area, it's just the length times the width. So it's x plus 6 times x squared minus 7x plus 12. That's your expression before it's simplified. To simplify a binomial times a trinomial, you are either going to FOIL or BOX. Okay, so to get in the box, we're going to multiply. So x to the third minus 7x squared, and then a 12x. And then I get 6x squared minus 42x um, plus 60. 72. Oh, man, losing it. 72. Combine like terms. So I have x to the third minus x squared minus 30x plus 72. Okay, again, we're adding, subtracting, multiplying um, polynomials. If you can do that, you're okay. You do need to know what area and perimeter are, are but you should be fine. All right, let's flip to the back. Number seven says find the perimeter and area of the figure. Okay, so perimeter would be easy. I'm going to add up all the sides, right? So we need to fill in some information because I have this side and this side and this side and this side and this side. What is this side? I'm hoping you're saying it's six centimeters because of the same length as this one. Now we have this little piece here. If the whole thing is 8, this piece is 5, and this piece is 2, what's left over? So 8 minus 5 minus 2 is 1 centimeter for that little piece. And then this side is, matches that side for 3 centimeters. So if I want the perimeter of this figure, I'm going to add up all the sides. So take a second and add up all of those sides. You should have gotten 34 centimeters. Let me just do it one more time to be sure. Yep, 34 centimeters. Now, area is going to be a little different because I have a figure that I don't know the area of. Any guesses on what we can do to find the area? I'm sending you some brain power. And hopefully you're coming up with that if I create two rectangles, I can find the area of each. I can find the area of this rectangle and then find the area of this rectangle and add them together. Remember, area is just length times width. So 8 times 3 gives me 24 centimeters squared. And this one down here is 6 times 2, which gives me 12 centimeters squared for a total of 36 centimeters squared. Okay. 
Number eight, we're finding the area of the shaded region. Last semester when we talked about volume and we found the volume of the shaded region or found, remember we took one volume out of the other, that's kind of what's happening here. So if I just want the area of this piece, I'm gonna find the area of the whole thing and then take out that center section. Okay, so the area of the whole figure is that 10.8 times 27. 10.8 times 27 is 291.60. And then I need the area of the inside figure, 19.8 times nine. And I get 178.20. And again, I'm taking that middle part out, so I'm gonna subtract those two. When I subtract, I am left with 113.40 inches, and because we are talking about area, it's inches squared. Okay. Again, make sure this gets attached to your notebook. You should have tape inside your drawer. Um, there is tape on the front desk if you need to come grab a piece, but do not forget to attach this to your notebook.